زب زب مكسيم Hello Maxim, I think you are muted Hey, <clears throat> hey guys, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. we can hear you Better, better now? Yeah, good Good yeah. Give me one sec Awesome cool. yeah, Maxim, we need to check um, We need to check if everything is working with you I think I will make you A co-host yeah, let me see if I can share my screen and everything. Okay, I will also make, uh, Jan, I will make you co-host, just in case. All right. Great. You guys both in Tokyo? Yeah. Sorry? You both in Tokyo? Yeah, correct. Uh, nice. Uh, are you on the first floor of uh, the hub, uh, Sasha? No. I'm at home. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> so I'm, I'm in our co-working space in uh, in Meguro in the hub. And uh, oh, yeah. yeah, I'm still inside the classroom. We had uh, a lecture until uh, six tonight. And um, I'm with uh, Tuni that you could see just before. In here. Hello. And we have one of our students, Moe, that said, uh, in here to, uh, to attend the workshop. So the other students of, uh, of the full-time batch will attend from, uh, from home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Yep. Okay, you guys need to check if everything is working in sound and voice. I just check if all the participants got the link, okay? Uh, okay, I didn't hear quite well what you said like what the first thing you said, but um, I guess she, she wanted us to check whether the, uh, the presentation uh, was working or not. <laughs> yeah, I guess let me try to share the screen. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll share the whole thing. How's it? Can you guys see it? Okay, yeah, I can see your screen. All right, good. I can see it. Awesome. So what I will do... <laughs> I've been trying for these three minutes to put this, this whiteboard out of my sight in the camera. Okay. Life is hard. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. So it looks good, good to know. <laughs> hmm. You're young, you are it, right? I am young, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we we talked through uh, through LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Thanks for trying to figure out the things. Yeah, I know I didn't write like detailed instructions, so hopefully people can follow. Yeah, it's totally right. Um, it's I think like. I mean, if you if you search a little bit, uh, you should, like people shouldn't have any problem. But there's always like one or two person, you know, that um, yeah, don't, yeah. don't search enough or like are a bit lost and stuff like this. So. Right, right. For okay. sure, for sure. Yeah. So let me guide you about the agenda. So usually we start around 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 five because you see like people still connecting and they will be connecting, I would say like for five minutes. So usually we yeah, have enough people yeah. to start like uh, seven or five. I will mm -hmm. do a very short, like two minutes introduction of Levagon, what we are doing here, like mm -hmm. the, the coding boot camps, And then I will give the mic to you guys. Um, now I will give mic to you and Jan will be on the back end. He will supporting um, in the chat. Sounds good, sounds good. So for one hour we have a lecture, right? And then after one hour lecture, we will have, um, 30 minutes, right? 30 minutes well, I think it's, uh, I mean, it's hard to, see. I didn't really time, you know, it depends on how much follow, how people can follow. But I think what we'll try to do is like short intro. And then basically we'll do like a little bit of 
you know, kind of explanation and then like kind of wait until everybody catch up and like kind of make sure that everybody can follow at the same time. So I, I'll try not to like talk for too long without like making sure that everybody can follow, you know. Great. Hopefully, hopefully great. people can, can respond, you know, can be like proactive in chat, like, and uh, tell if they have any problems so we can resolve them. Mm -hmm. Well, usually, um, if we have two people and one person is taking care of chat, you don't mm -hmm. have to look at the chat that often, but right. probably you will, like, I would really appreciate if you could take a look just sometimes. Yeah, it's just easier for me too, you know, like to know the audience because it's like a first time I really like present like kind of remotely, you know, so it's kind of hard like without the feel, you know, it's like it's like doing stand up comedy during you know, via Zoom, you know, you're like, <laughs> it's pretty hard, I think. Well, yeah. when was the last time you did a workshop or online, <laughs> offline, sorry, offline? offline uh, workshop or well like yeah maybe a while ago like i thought so. well i mean maybe a year i guess yeah i would say a year yeah yeah so <laughs> if there's any um like any any question or any information that is in the chat and that would uh, concern you directly uh i'll uh i'll try to uh to, to tell you during the during the the workshop so no worries yeah, about feel free to interrupt yeah i, I don't think i'll I'll yeah, yeah. I think I'll make enough pauses so you can jump in anytime. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of uh, a lot of our uh, students already. There's uh, Davide, Liam from the part time, Veronica from the full time, Mike and Yusuke that are two uh, alumni. That Justin from the full time too. Mm -hmm. Cool. That's uh. That's nice that they're yeah, all here. Hey guys. It's really amazing yeah. that everyone continues to learn even after like radiating and finding a job. Still getting right. some knowledge all the time. Yeah, I'm very happy happy about that because that's probably the, the only way to to keep uh, on track with the technology and to to just uh, you know remember how to code. Just like uh, just like just like language, right? If you practice Japanese or any other language, uh, you get better. If you don't, mm -hmm. you get worse. Mike Sensei. Like <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's Grace, Maxim, also two alumni of Low Wagon. Just Maybe to let you know, guys, uh, we start as usual, 7.05. 705 to make sure everyone is uh, running from the workplace to home, we're like, finishing the snacks, dinner. Yeah, I, I know that for this uh, this workshop, there is um, there are some uh, prerequisites pre that we sent uh, on, um, on on Meetup. Uh, shall we uh, share them right now so that in case people didn't do the prerequisite yet, um, they'll go for it. Yeah, I'm so I have a question to audience who hasn't done the prerequisites yet and who needs our help in settings. Uh, raise your hand if you uh, if you didn't do the prerequisites so you can keep on participants and raise your hands. Uh, there is a raise hand button. Mm -hmm. Or actually a react you can click on reaction and uh, thumbs up. Sorry, my bad. Okay, it looks like everyone did homework. Oh no, Veronica. So I also have uh, one one bad student in front of me that didn't do the, the <laughs> requisites. I think like uh, after after a little bit of like intro, um, I'll make a pause so that uh, we can like um, kind of catch up on uh, the prerequisites and uh, those who already did it can we'll have something to do as well so we we can catch up during first pause probably like you know, up to five ten minutes after we begin mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. great did you change the prerequisite a bit in the last time or this is the same one that i posted in meetup yeah pretty much same yeah i expanded a bit uh, like but uh, never mind it's too late now so yeah, we'll just 
we'll just go with the flow, like wherever everybody is. Yeah. Okay, just a very short question about uh, about the prerequisite, just uh, between you and me, uh, Maxim, to to make sure that I'm being smooth. Uh, the 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 repo name is your name, right? Yeah, it's called your name. I mean, I know it's okay. a little bit confusing. I should have, yeah, in retrospect, it's a bit confusing. But yeah, uh, it's 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 alright. Just uh, like, uh -huh. yeah, just, yeah, just make sure. Cool. Okay, so we will start in one minute. And there's a question from Mike, the question or statement. I guess it's just a note. Uh, Veronica okay. has some issues with AWS. I will help you, Veronica. I will mute my mic from, from for the time being. Max, we can see your amazing t-shirt, but we can't see your face. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, my t-shirt may be better, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Problem with a standing desk, I guess. Yeah. So, oh, you, you have know. a standing desk. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys, let's start. And since I see um, a lot of Levogon students among participants, I don't think today I have to go through some small introduction and introduce Levogon because everyone already knows what Levogon is and uh, what we are doing here. Uh, maybe for Mike, uh, well, for Mike, sorry, for Maxim. Uh, we are global coding bootcamp and we basically teach people how to code and build some cool web applications in nine weeks and 24 weeks as well part-time and uh, here I'm so happy to have Jan helping you today Max. Um, Jan is a part-time bootcamp teacher and he's also teaching our upcoming data science bootcamp in October. Uh, so Usually we have workshops like this every week and we um, often invite uh, interesting people like you, Max, to deliver the workshops to share some knowledges with uh, the audience, startup and tech related audience in Japan. So I'm very happy to welcome you today to our workshop. I'm looking forward to the content as well. And uh, probably that's all for me for today uh, about the Levagon since you all already know very well about it. And I'm giving microphone to Maxim. Maxim, please introduce yourself. Hello everybody. It's kind of a little bit weird experience for me. Like, so it's my first uh, like uh, video conference and like a uh, kind of workshop thing uh, as a presenter. So <clears throat> um, let's hope it goes well. <laughs> my name is Maxim, so as a, uh, Sasha kindly introduced me. Uh, uh, so I live in Osaka now. I worked uh, in robotics and uh, different uh, areas of natural language um, uh, kind of applications, including talking to robots, talking to um, some uh, educational uh, applications. Um, and most recently, like uh, as uh, small speakers became um, pretty popular, including in Japan. Um, I started working with uh, uh, smart speakers. Um, that's about it. So uh, right now, like I'm, I'm building a kind of natural language related business uh, in Japan. Um, and uh, part of this business is uh, smart speaker skills. So I'm still fresh in this area. So hopefully uh, there will be no visible rust in my knowledge today. Um, I'm excited to share what, uh, what I know. Um, so just a quick um, kind of uh, heads up that what we're gonna do is a relatively basic like hello world um, uh, Alexa skill. So, you know, for those who are already have done some Alexa skills, this may be a little bit too simple. And for those who um, 
don't know any JavaScript, this may be a little bit hard, but not too hard because I prepared all the code already. So you can just download the code and copy paste it and it will still work. So this requirement, the JavaScript requirement is a little bit uh, uh, soft. Um, anyway, so uh, again, like it's a little weird for me, like not to see like faces and uh, like, because also like, uh, you know, I'm used to people being confused by my accents like a lot. So usually like I, when I see like the eyes kind of start like being uh, glassy and like kind of like people <laughs> people stop blinking, you know, like I know something going wrong. So please um, uh, feel free to use a chat um, window extensively. And Jan is there to help with the details and I will be, I also have it open all the time. So I will be looking for Cool. Is that it, Sasha? Like, can, yeah. How are we going on? Okay. Thank you so much, Maxim. Thank you so much for introducing yourself. Yeah, so Jan mm -hmm. will be today your backend teacher. He will be supporting you on the chat. Feel free to send any message or if you have any problem, question, setting, something like that. Um, and there's nothing wrong with your accent, Maxim. I have the same, so it's okay. Oh, I didn't Those say anything are. wrong. <laughs> I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying, you know, like it's sometimes, I mean, I, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> no worries okay cool. guys well, thanks, yeah. let's start uh -huh. let's start sounds good so let me just uh, again like on a topic of what we're gonna achieve today let me show what's gonna happen so hopefully like all of you guys already um, completed uh, the prerequisites uh, or most of the prerequisites uh, and uh, know how to get to this kind of window a developer console so what we're gonna achieve today, so let me show. So I created here. Uh -oh. Keeps signing out very quickly. So what we're gonna achieve is we're gonna create a skill in developer console that we can test. And it's gonna be something like that. This is a skill invocation. Can you guys hear, by the way, the sound from the computer? Probably not, right? Yeah, it's perfect. You, you, you could hear the Alexa sound? No. I know, right? So you, 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 can, you can hear just me, but you couldn't hear the Alexa, right? So yeah, basically like the, uh, I, I heard it. <laughs> so Alexa said, um, hold on, I'm not sharing the screen, right? Yeah, you're not sharing the screen. This is what I was okay, about to ask. Okay, 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 yeah, yeah, that's a good, <laughs> that's a good catch. Uh, let me share it. All right, now you can see it, right? Yeah, we can see it. And Lime also says that you can share a computer sound. How do you share on Zoom? Yeah. Lime. Let's see. How is it possible? Because... So it's a bit uh, tricky if we could uh, hear the sounds uh, like like in the way we are right now it could be maybe better. I already tried to uh, share my computer sound during a, a meeting. It didn't, didn't work out very well. So yeah, if, it's okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. if, it's work, if it's working like this, uh, we should better go for this. Yeah, it's, it's fine. Yeah, so I mean, because it, it also types, uh, basically you, you see what Alex is supposed to say as well, but on your own computers, you guys should be able to see the sound, to hear the sound. So I created a couple of skills here. I will delete them and we'll go step by step together. So from scratch, but basically what we're gonna achieve is that in this uh, test panel of the Alexa developer console, we can uh, invoke the skill by typing the invocation name that we selected. So Alexa said to me like, hi, what's your name in her Alexa voice? Then I can say or type. So I will be typing here instead of saying, so I will say, uh, my name is Maxine. And there will be a little bit of a chime audio. So that's pretty much it. So this is the basic skill we should all be able to create today. Sounds good. 
So again, like if you're beyond this level, so that may be a little bit um, not so interesting for you, but um, I mean, you may be able, uh, I'll go through creation of skill using Lambda and AWS. So they may be still interesting for those who want to refresh that part. Um, otherwise, if you never created a skill, this is exactly the uh, workshop for you. Cool. So let me first introduce, like in general, the what is the skill and what is this, like you know how smart speakers work. Um, so some of you may be familiar, but basically the natural language, you know, any natural language application that is controlled by voice uh, has these kind of modules um, right here. So the sound waves are kind of got into the computer and they're digitized and processed with their like automated speech recognition system, which outputs text, right? So this is a classic, by the way, schema, like maybe like recently, like some of these may be changing, but this is still how it works in Alexa, for example, in Amazon. Uh, so after the text uh, is obtained, basically a transcription of what the user said, it goes to natural language understanding model where the meaning is obtained. So basically, if uh, I say my name is Maxime, then uh, after this module, it is a text. And then after this module, it is will be like um, the structured data, like a JSON, where which says like the intent was a name and the slot was Maxime, right? So this is this JSON is something we can work with already. Uh, in a dialog manager. So dialog manager is basically main kind of engine of the, uh, of the uh, application, which are responsible for the logic of the application. This is maybe a business logic or uh, as well as conversational logic, you know, as you know, like conversations, they follow their own kind of rules. Um, for example, conversations have like greeting phase, uh, maybe chit chat phase, maybe uh, depending on the goal of conversation. There could be different stages or different topics and uh, you know politeness rules and so on. Um, so the dialog manager is in charge basically of uh, controlling everything like that. Um, it may use because uh, you know conversation is like it's a, um, in some ways a pinnacle of human <laughs> intelligence, right? So we still haven't, you know, it's, it's one way to access, assess somebody's intelligence is through conversation. So conversation is very hard to fake, um, even though recently, you know, as you may know, there are some successes from DeepMind into uh, like with a, with a like deep learning system in trying to fake a conversation, but um, still there are ways to go basically to be successful in faking the conversation. So um, these, logic engine needs to have access to some knowledge data. So it needs to have a persistent knowledge, like a memory of the conversation. And it needs to have like some data services. So if your conversation is about weather or travel, you know, you may want to get access to some of those services as well. And finally, like, uh, well, the output of this dialogue manager will be also structured data, which will be kind of similar to the, what it has, what it had a, at the input, right? So the output will be maybe what it, what you want to say now, what the system wants to respond um, in a structured format, like maybe a JSON with a, like um, saying, like a, say greet person, use the person's name um, and ask the next question, right? And then the natural language generation module basically takes the structured data and converts it into the text, which is a, a human readable. And then the text-to-speech model creates a sound wave, which can finally be played via the speakers. All right. So here I basically uh, put a, put this uh, nice boundary on the things that are not provided for free by Alexa. So basically speech recognition, natural language understanding, and text-to-speech text is provided for free for any Alexa skill developer. So the rest of the stuff, like kind of logic uh, of the conversation, you have to implement yourself. Uh, you don't have to use Alexa or Amazon services for that, so you can implement any backend. 
Um, it's kind of convenient to use Amazon in, in some ways, but it's completely not a requirement, right? So you could use any service that you want. So you just need a basically a, 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 some a web webhook that you can uh, uh, use um, to send the data and receive the response, basically. That's all. Cool. Any questions so far? Let me check the. So far, so good. <laughs> so far, so good. How many people do we have? Uh, about 10, 20, I see. Cool. So now, like, um, did everybody succeed into creating, not AWS account uh, yet, so, but in creating the Alexa console account? Is anybody who, let me share the screen again. And uh, so is there anybody who is not able to get to this window? Yeah, you guys can raise your hand if you couldn't. Uh, so you want people to do it at the same time, right? Definitely. Okay. So guys, please access the same window that Maxim is talking about. And if you can't, please raise your hand or write down in the chat. We will get back to you. As I paste the link to the window so in the chat so you guys can go there. So let me delete all this stuff so that you guys know I'm not cheating, but I'll go through the same troubles as you are. Yeah. Delete. Nice, so that's something that you should have now. So no skills available, all right? So I think, yeah, I see one response like um, Carty can access. So hopefully everybody is able to log into this window. So let's go ahead and uh, create our first skill. Well, let's call it uh, hello test, for example, yeah. Um, we we'll select the default language English, keep this default, custom, and uh, we'll start with Alexa hosted, um, which means basically that we should be able to provide the backend code in the same uh, web interface that we will be accessing. So it's a little bit toy kind of um, UI, but that will be helpful for, for, for us to begin with. Okay, so just leave the default like here, so and we create a skill. So, okay, it helps. It's going to help us with providing a few templates. So we're actually not going to use any of those templates. So we're going to use our own code. So right now, like you can just leave it as a as a default. and just continue. Um, Maxim, could you please make yeah. the full screen maybe? Mm -hmm. It's a little small. By a bit. Is it better? Yep, thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. Maybe we can zoom the fonts as well. Takes a little bit for the cloud people to move. Probably this it takes a, a minute, like it says. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> it's a little longer than um, like normally you would do because it's, uh, as I say, it's a little bit like toy kind of toy skill environment, which provides you a kind of sandbox to play around. So they create a little bit extra than usual. Um, so they create like this dialogue manager kind of for you for this, uh, for this situation. So it's done with creating the skill. So everybody should be able to get to this kind of, uh, page. If you are not, 
let us know if you have a problem like getting here. All right. Cool. So we still have to know. Uh -huh. So, yep. I see Jan gave an extra explanation. Thanks, Jan. Um, so now we can just go to the code. And we'll see that Alexa already filled like here the template that we chose, like hello world template. Alexa already <clears throat> like provided you with some template and the code. So this is uh, kind of using the uh, Alexa library. There's a special library for this, which I think for educational purposes, we will not be using. <laughs> so you can safely like uh, erase this and uh, we're going to use our own plain JavaScript that uh, I think will help you understand much more what's going on. So to get that, we'll need to download our Git repo. So let me share the... So everybody is having, does have a Git, Git account, I hope. Um, I'm pretty sure all the level one students have. Right. So please clone this Git repo. I paste it in the chat. Too simple. This one. And uh, if you clone successfully, that's uh, select index underscore one JS and uh, paste that code into the. Uh, uh -oh. Where is this? Into the. Uh, Alexa into this, into the Alexa developer console. Sorry for the jumping around stuff. Yep. Okay. Cool. Then save and deploy. Deployment successful. So now we can go to the, let's go to the build. So build is corresponding to this thing, to the natural language understanding module that I was talking about before. So this actually contains the uh, interaction model. This was a uh, kind of Amazon name for the things that you expect the user to say, right? So you will help define the interaction model, which will help you translate what user says into the structured representation, which will be a JSON, right? But for now, let's just try to have a simple interaction. So we have a skill invocation name that's written automatically is already basically pre-filled the same as a skill name. So let's leave it like that. And we can go to the test. So let's enable the test. Initially it will be disabled. So here. And uh, then we can invoke the skill by basically typing the invocation name. Cool. So this is uh, 
basically the working Alexa skill, the minimal Alexa skill. So I'll wait for a minute uh, just to make sure that everybody go to that point and was able to re get a response from Alexa. And feel free to ask any questions in the chat window as well. So here, uh, let me introduce meanwhile this uh, this window. Um, like here, you can replay what Alexa said. Here is the output of natural language understanding module to your backend. So as you can see, it has uh, some inf information about the uh, hardware that you are using. So this is a kind of simulator. So this is a console panel. So it has some defaults for the simulator. Uh, but if you, as you know, like Alexa has many Echo devices with different, with different uh, capabilities. Some have screens, some don't have screens. Bless you, Sash. Uh, and um, um, basically, you can find out about the device type that the user is using from this uh, uh, from this output. Also, it has a user ID, which is important because you can store this user ID in your persistent storage and uh, you know um, address the user differently next time. You know, you have first time users and you have a repeat users. So you may want to remember what they did there previous times. And then if you scroll down, you will see the important part for us at the moment is this request part, which basically indicates what was the user saying, right? So in this case, simple case, uh, this was a launch request. So it doesn't really matter. And Alexa doesn't really tell you how the user launched the skill. It just says that uh, it was a launch request. So for example, I could, let me exit. So exit just kills the skill. So let me um, start a different way. So I could have said uh, open hello test. That's another way to start a skill. And uh, you see the skill started as well. Um, and uh, you got the same basically output from uh, natural language understanding to your backend. So there's no way to know exactly what the user says. And, and this is kind of on purpose because um, I think Amazon wants to control uh, the ways uh, that your skill is um, started. Sometimes they may recommend the user, you know, to start your skill in a way that is not, um, you know, in, in a different way. So the user may say like, oh, I want to play a game about travel. And then, you know, the Alexa device may say, oh, would you like to start this skill? Hello test. And the user says yes. And then this, your skill may be started. So that's another way the skill for skill to start. But in any way, in all cases, you your first output from Alexa device would be this launch request. Okay. I think uh, that was a little more than one minute. So is everybody able to run this uh, simple skill? If not, let us know, yeah. I guess everybody is pretty good student, right? So there's no, no problem with this kind of stuff. <laughs> All right, good. Um, awesome, so let's just uh, examine the code a little bit. So the code is very simple, so I don't use any libraries or anything just to make sure that it's very transparent what we are doing here. So, this is the shape of the output that Alexa device accepts, right? So, <laughs> hold on a sec. Let me, I'm, I mute my Alexa because it started, yeah. So, um, basically, the, let me increase a bit. So, Let's focus on this part, so the response. So this 
contains like a block about uh, output speech where you define what should be said. And this is uh, in SSML format, which is basically a markup language, um, XML based markup language. So here, the most simple form is just to use a speak tag, which is a, like basically all SSML in Alexa should be enclosed in the speak tag. So we'll just use this. Um, then there is a card, which is like what will be shown to the user on a screen. So if you can see, let me scroll a little. This window, you see like, this is what's shown basically the contents of the card that we output. And the reprompt is uh, if the user doesn't say, doesn't respond within a certain number of seconds, usually about eight to 10 seconds, uh, depending on the noise and everything uh, in the environment, uh, then the Alexa will reprompt without hitting your backend. So you provide both prompt and reprompt at the same time. All right, and here the should end session basically is uh, the binary attribute, which is which means that whether you want to finish the skill or you want to continue the conversation. So since it's very simple skill, like a one turn skill, um, that just says hi there, we end the conversation right away. Cool, and we just return this um, JSON. So this is our simple backend, um, and this the interaction which uh, results. All right. So now, like, if there are no questions uh, that I can see, let's spice it up a bit and go to the next level. So now, basically. As, um, as you can see, like we can play with this uh, the code panel, and those who didn't have a success in uh, access in AWS probably can continue using this code panel for this for the duration of this workshop. Um, but um, in reality, when you code like a skill, you wouldn't want to use necessarily this kind of uh, environment, this editor. So you want to use your own editor, and you want to have a uh, kind of common line automated deployment tools. So today I thought uh, a little bit beyond the basic Alexa skill, it will be the uh, kind of introduction on how to use the AWS as a backend for Alexa skill as well. <clears throat> so uh, let's see. I think majority like from, I saw like a couple of people have issues with AWS. So maybe we can address them now, like during the, the first kind of break that we have to perform the next, uh, next task. But uh, I think majority had a success with the, with the AWS. So let's just log in with AWS. Those who are able, let's log in into the AWS window. So you should be able to, uh, like a developer, let's go like developer console. So you should be able to get the page which looks like that. Who is not able to log in? Can they pre please like um, type something in a chat so that uh, Jan or I can kind of help and be aware what's going on? Uh, Maxim, do you mind sending the URL again in the chat? For, for the prerequisites. Oh uh, yes. The, instru the instructions. Oh. Yeah. Right. Maybe for the, for this console. For That's the good idea. Console. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I just send the, the doc with the prerequisites. So, so the tricky part a little bit there is to. You know, Alexa kind of Amazon recommends you to create a kind of second user, like administrator user, not to use your um, root uh, account um, 
credentials for the command line access and uh, yeah, you can do it. Uh, I mean, it's recommended, uh, but you, you don't have to like for the purpose of this demo, like you can as well just um, uh, use your root account as well. So, but what you need for CLI is to get their uh, kind of access codes. Hopefully most of people were able to do it. Uh, Maxime, I got a question yeah. about uh, yep. um, the CLI. Have <laughs> you, do you have experience of installing uh, the AWS CLI on Ubuntu, Linux? Uh, I didn't, but uh, I think it should be no problem. Yeah, so I, th I think they have packages there, right? So on that page, did you check? Was there any specific problem? Um, it was a bit less clear than on uh, Mac or Windows, but uh, mm -hmm. let you see uh, if we can find a way. Right. Yeah, I know it's a little kind of, it could be a little cumbersome at first, but uh, I promise that's a pretty powerful tool that will save a lot of um, pain in the future in general and opens the world of uh, like AWS cloud developments basically for you on your own machine. Another question from Maxim with an E, uh, does it matter what region we pick uh, mm -hmm. is non okay? Uh, <laughs> when you do CLI, I, I, I think you re I recommend to pick a region. Yeah, so uh, usually it's better to pick the region where your customers will be if you are doing production application but you, you know if you don't have customers for this demo it doesn't matter you can pick like whichever is closest to you um for simplicity like you just when you pick your region remember that region that you specified in your cli because um it will be easier to when you create a lambda function you will have to use the same region like just to uh to make the easier to make it easier but in general it doesn't really matter so you can do cross region deployments uh, without problems so i use uh, tokyo like asia pacific one region but uh, in us for people in us it's very common to use like either east coast or west coast like uh, regions There's also a region like in beta, I think, but um, I don't think it's publicly available yet. All right, but for those who are able to get to the AWS, let's go to the Lambda console. And um, see here, I already created, created the function. Let me uh, erase it. Do, do, action, do it. So I start from the clean slate. Um, so no functions so far. So let's create a new function from scratch. Function name, let's call it something like uh, uh, hello test and uh, leave all the defaults here as they are. Press create function, it also takes a few seconds. You can see like the region here on top is a uh, for me, is Tokyo is the same region that I created the CLI uh, profile at. But uh, technically, you don't need to use the same region. You just will have to modify the command. CLI command has a flag a region. So you will have to use that flag if you're deploying across the regions. The my setting, the, the code that I provide, like in the, in the repo that you cloned, it assumes the same region. So, Maybe better use the same region that you specified before. 
All right, so my Lambda function is created. And you see like here, they also provide you with some uh, inline editor with their like basic stub, the boilerplate code for the function. Um, we don't need to use it. Instead, we'll be using CLI to deploy the function from your local machine. So here on top, you see the ARN, so it's Amazon resource number, I think. Uh, so basically a unique identifier of every Amazon AWS resource. So we'll need these, so you can copy it into a clipboard and then go to the wrapper and open the package file. Here in package, I specified a couple of um, aliases for deployment. So one is deploy, and as you can see, it calls AWS uh, CLI here. You guys can see my screen. Um, and here, like my previous Lambda that I just deleted was has this ARN. So I remove it and I replace it with the one I just created. So everybody should be able to do the same. And save the package file. All right, I'll wait for a second before everybody's caught up. You're such in the darkness there. We can't see it all, Maxime. Oh, I thought I'm sharing <laughs> the screen. Why do you need to see me? <laughs> Okay, okay. Yeah. And I need some fancy background like yours, you know. <laughs> Can anybody send a message on uh, in chat if you succeeded getting to this point? I think we we need at least like two people to go through to consider it a success. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, great. That's two people. Awesome. So now you can just go to your to your command line and uh, okay. So let's move this. Uh, What's the index? Okay, let's move this index one. Let me increase there. Increase the fonts a bit. Um, wow. I think you should be able to make the font bigger by clicking Command Shift and Plus. Right. Oh, okay. Oh, good point. Yeah. Well, now it's giant. Okay. Cool. So now we can go to our repo. So this is our repo, and let's move this uh, index to just index yes. So this will be the entry point into Lambda function. Now, like in prerequisites, we had N NPM and node. So you, you should have NPM installed. Um, now let's just install all the packages that we have in, for this module. So for me, I already installed before, so it's very fast for you, it may take a minute. And after that, we do npm run deploy, which will execute the deploy, uh, deploy script that I created before, specifically 
it will first execute pre-deploy, like zip up everything. And then it will use the AWS CLI to upload your zipped um, code to the AWS cloud. Boom, successful. So now we deployed like index one, which is uh, basically the code that we used in our last uh, demo from the Alexa console. Just says hello there, right? Hi there. Sounds good. So let me know if you guys uh, go to this point. For those who are completely like not able to do AWS like Lambda thing is that right now at the moment because you haven't installed CLI or something else. Um, you could just go to the, uh, for example, index two file and copy paste it into the Alexa console the way we did for the index one and kind of see what happens. So you can do basically everything we do today, you can do uh, on Alexa console as well. almost everything. In the end, we're gonna have one like um, extra point for using the um, sound that we're gonna store in S3 and AWS S3. So that will require the uh, AWS access as well. All right, does somebody, has somebody succeeded in deploying the Lambda function? Getting to this point in a command line? Uh -huh. So I guess your administrator user may not have a update function code on resource. Why your user, hold on, let me see. You seem to be using the ARN from my, yeah, you have to replace the ARN here. So I think you haven't replaced the ARN in your package. So use uh, the ARN from your own Lambda. So get this here, yeah. You know, you will have a different, so this number here is your user like ID basically, Amazon user uh, account ID to be precise. So it will be different for you. But thanks for trying to deploy into my Lambda. I'm kind of glad Amazon doesn't allow that. <laughs> right, so this is the case, so your you created a function in US two, but your <clears throat> uh, yeah, but your like uh, CLI is in the Tokyo region, right? Gotcha. So I need to pen the settings themselves. 
so you you can do what you can do now is you can either create like another lambda like in a in a different in Tokyo region or you can modify this AWS command and you can add a region I think like if you go to and for anybody else who may have the same problem there are command line options Oops. I don't I never can remember so if you search for region so yeah so you can specify I mean obviously dash dash region and put a, your target region basically in this command so for you Jan it would be like US is two for this command see if it works okay mm -hmm. Cool, I see he has succeeded and slash as well. Cool. So, yep, let's continue then. So now that you deployed it, you can refresh, like reload the page, for example. And uh, you will see that you cannot see this stop code anymore. Instead, you see this message that deployment package for your Lambda is too big to basically to uh to allow inline coding so that kind of means something happens right so your code now lives there in the cloud um you can do a simple test that it works so uh, let's open config test events at the top here so and um, just call it test one just leave whatever it is here as you remember like our initial index one so we copied index one right so as you remember the code in index one like didn't really care about the input event so here we never use the input event outside of printing it out so it doesn't really matter what we input to our lambda so let's just test and here you can see the output of the lambda test succeeded boom this is what the output is so this is again this is our backend which is completely separate from whatever alexa was about right so right now they are still not connected so we just verify that our backend provides the output which is in the same format that alexa device expects hopefully right and if you you know for your future like lambda code you will probably have more debug output so you can go you know not just the you want you may want to check your debug output rather than just the function output so you can go to you can click on logs there and uh, it opens a whole new like aws service called uh, cloudwatch which shows you the log output the everything the printout basically console uh printouts of your function so here as you can see this was the input event the test that we specified and our response was this and then they provide a little bit of their kind of infrastructure information it took eight milliseconds they count it as 100 milliseconds <laughs> to be less uh, i guess they round up a little slightly but a uh, good thing like basically um, there is a lot of, uh, I mean, uh, for for this demo, like you're not going to hit any paid, basically services. So these are a huge amount of for those who are using AWS, like for the first time. Uh, the the quota for the free uh, service is huge. So you know, even with the skills that are used in production, like you, you know, you pay like uh, not so much usually. But be careful with that, you know, in general, like when you have a thousand users, for example, accessing your data, you know, you may get uh, billed accordingly. But usually it's relatively cheap, and especially for the testing purposes, it will be free today. I'm pretty sure. 
cool. So everybody is good up to this point. In that case, let's now connect this uh, Lambda function that we created with the um, Alexa skill. So that this Lambda function is the backend for Alexa skill instead of this stuff that we posted, that we pasted here before. So let's go to build in the skill. Here in the bottom, you will see endpoint. So here, because we selected like, uh, if you remember in the beginning, we selected like kind of Amazon Alexa provisioned backend. So they created all this stuff for us. Like it's some sort of nameless Lambda somewhere uh, that we technically own. Uh, and that's where like the code leaves when we edit this uh, UI. Uh, here, but as you can see, it still allows you to put your own stuff here. So you can even use not uh, AWS Lambda at all. You can use HTTP at any like uh, RESTful API. Basically, you can provide your own ser server anywhere on Google Cloud or any other cloud that you like, or even your local computer. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna replace what we had here. So conveniently, it erased everything. <laughs> I didn't know that would happen, but uh, we don't need it anyway. So what we're gonna put is, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put here our ARM from our Lambda. We're gonna paste it right here. Cool. And uh, let's try to save the endpoint, save the endpoint. So it warns us that it will clear Alexa hosted stuff that we created in our beginning. So fine, we don't care. Let's do it. So it says save failed. The trigger setting for the Lambda blah, blah, blah is invalid. Error skill manifest error. So what it means is that we want to collect, we want to connect, we want to use this backend, but we didn't kind of set permissions on the backend side that we can use it for, for this skill. Because as you remember, these are two different logins basically in AWS and into Alexa. So these are two different permission spaces. So we need to somehow let our Lambda know that uh, we want to use it for, um, for our Alexa skill. And the way to do it is here on the top of the Lambda page. If you notice, I kind of remove the logs or you can just reload. I close the logs window. So you should be able to see this page. So you, on the left, you see add trigger. So this is where you kind of give permissions for other services to trigger your Lambda. In the add trigger, you can find Alexa skill kit. Just select that. And from your Alexa skill page, just copy the, the skill ID mm -hmm. and paste it here. Boom, now it's successfully added. The function is now receiving events from this trigger. Right, that's what we wanted. So where, where are we here? Yep, so now we should be able to save this endpoint. Yep, success. So now our Alexa skill, hello test, is pointing to our Lambda function, which does basically exactly what the previous endpoint did as well, right? So let's just test that it works. Let's invoke the skill. Good, so the response was good. So something works, let's just make sure that it actually hit our Lambda. So if we go to the Lambda function, we click on monitoring, view logs in CloudWatch. OK, 
in big manner. You can see this is the logs. You can see most recent logs are from 2002. So this is just now, right? In Japan time. So this is the uh, this is the request that I just sent from the skill, right? And this was the request. This was input, the real input from the Alexa simulator console. Remember the launch request part here? This is the viewport, the screen types and everything. And this is the user ID and everything is good. So now basically you have all the power of the, you know, AWS Alexa, or AWS Lambda backend connected to your skill, which is right now in a simulator console, but you know, you can, if you have Alexa device, you could as well test it on Alexa device. There were a few steps, so I did not pause. So let me just wait for a minute, just make sure that everybody gets to that point. And if somebody who didn't have access to AWS uh, skipped this part so they can rejoin now because we're gonna be deploying the next version of the code in a second. All right, I'll wait until a couple of people kind of report in the chat window that they had success getting to this point. Maxim, can you explain very quick uh, the mm -hmm. steps to link um, uh, AWS and uh, Alexa? Yes. So basically, mm -hmm. on both, on these both, as, as you already figured out, probably like this, basically, uh, Alexa ski, developer console and the AWS console are like two completely different kind of parts of the of the Amazon kind of infrastructure. So you need to let both of them know of each other right to be able to connect so in the skill on a skill side you just go to the build section and you will find the endpoint here so here you you have an option to put a lambda endpoint or like http s endpoint so in our case it's lambda so it's um we just paste our lambdas arn here And it doesn't matter what the region or anything like that. So um, here they have multiple regions so that just the skill knows which Lambda to hit if the user is in this uh, specific region. So for example, if your Lambda is in a Tokyo region, you may wanna like um, Far East kind of region specify your Lambda here for Far East region. So in simple case, you don't bother, you just put a default region like here. So all users will go to the same Lambda function. But you know, if you have a user around the world, you may wanna like have your Lambda functions hosted in different regions to reduce the uh, latency. All right, so, and, and there, yeah, similarly on Alexa, on, on the Lambda side. Yeah, it's a larger version of the chimpanzee. You just go to the add trigger and you select the Alexa skill kit, which basically is a Lambda kind of thing. Oh, I mean, is Alexa kind of thing, as it says. So you will specify your skill ID here, which you also retrieve from this page, which is this this kind of uh, string. So that's how you connect basically your skill with your Lambda backend. Does it clarify it? Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, let me know. So I see there's a after connecting successfully to the endpoint, now when I test Alexa says, I'm not sure, and monitoring on AWS shows no activity. Aha, uh -huh. so maybe, maybe it's not really successfully connected. So 
how you debug in this case is uh, you go to your test right where you heard Alexa said, I'm not sure. So you try to invoke your skill. Like, do you see this side and this side? This is for uh, Maxime with E at the end. So this is basically a backend output. Uh, sounds like you are not really connected to the backend. Uh, or maybe you're connected, but your skill, ah, I'm not sure. I think this is Alexa output when it doesn't know that you're invoking the skill. So try to go to the build and uh, check the invocation name for your skill. Like, yeah, a lot. So your invocation, hmm. can you save just to make sure? Try to use like open hello test, for example. And the worst case, uh, you know, just try log log out or log in and log out or like reload altogether this page. You know, sometimes there are like bugs that creep in even on, on their side. You can do also this trick like off and on. I'll give you another minute for people to get to this point. Oh yeah, I guess it's possible that there is a little bit of delay, I guess. Usually it's not so common, like I didn't I didn't have this issue before, I think, but sometimes it takes a few seconds for things to kind of propagate. All right, for those who are kind of have success already, uh, let's open uh, index two. And kind of move it to, to the index. So the index two will have a little like one turn conversation basically. All right, see I, for Maxime with E, it worked like after waiting for a bit, good to know. <laughs> Useful hint, yeah. Sometimes just doing nothing works. 
All right, so in the index two, so we're gonna implement the stuff which I showed in the beginning where the Alexa, the interaction I showed in the beginning where Alexa asks username and then your skill asks your username and then uses your name in the conversation. So how are we gonna do it? So first, let's go back to the skill. Open the build tab, which is, as you remember, is a natural language understanding basically model. And uh, check out the interaction model. Click on the intent. And you see there's a hello world intent, which was like a remainder of our like previous life of our skill as a kind of provided by the, by the Alexa, because we created from, a, not from zero, but from a, some Alexa template. So let's, uh, how can we, it'd be good to be able to remove it. All right, so let's go to the intents here. I clicked on top of the intents. You see hello, hello world intent and let's erase it. Gone. So outside of hello world intent, all of these intents that are here are, as you can see, they have Amazon in front. So they're all predefined intents from Amazon Alexa and they're all required intents. That means that your, whatever your skill is, if you deploy it in production, for people, you know, use it uh, through Alexa devices or through their cell, phone, cell phones, through Alexa skill, through Alexa app on a cell phone, they need to be able to, your skill needs to be able to handle uh, cancel, help, stop, and their uh, home kind of intents of the user, which kind of makes sense. You can imagine it's similar to like mobile app development. Your app needs to be able to handle like opening, uh, shutting down, um, like re resizing and things like that, right? So we will not be concerned with these intents at the moment, but because we are not gonna deploy like in production, but in the future, when you develop your skill further, you will, you will need to take care of these intents as well. What we want is for the user to be able to say, my name is uh, Maxime uh, and uh, for the skill to be able to understand that and to extract the name from this phrase, right? How do we do it? So we'll need to create a new intent, which we'll call my name intent. All right, so, and uh, it lets us provide sample utterances for this intent. So let's our sample utterance be my name is and then I use curly brackets to denote that this will be a slot, a variable, in other words. So as soon as I type two curly brackets, it pops up this window to allow me to create new slots, so which I will call the first name slot. And I will add it, right? Good. And I click on plus just to save this uh, example. So here, basically, we want to provide different ways that the users may say their name, right? So you can say like, whatever people call me like this. Uh, I don't know. Um, for you, you know, I am this. Things like that, right? Or just, you know, plain, you can just say your name like without anything, right? That should be able to be understood too. Um, the more you provide here, the more accurate the uh, recognition will be naturally. Um, so, but you know, like usually in a, like that's where the design part of the skill comes in into play because as a designer uh, with some experience, you may be able to predict how users will talk to your skill, to your applications. Um, but uh, in reality, you know, usually people find a way to interact, uh, you know, unexpectedly and to surprise you, know, you even if you have experience in this. So that's why usually you need to monitor the data and to be able to 
kind of see what people actually say to your skill to constantly update your um, intent and interaction model. All right, so here we created a name, we created a slot called first name slot, right? But as you noticed here, it has a slot type for the slot. Uh, we didn't really specify to the Alexa um, what are the contents of this slot can be, right? So right now it can be like any any word or any sequence of words in uh, English language. So we really want to specify like kind of the subset of the words to increase our accuracy of recognition. So and I think there was a Let's see. Uh huh. See, there's a GB first name. This is Alexa predefined kind of thing. So, this is a British first names. And uh, if you are like kind of, there's a German first name, you know, like, so for now, you know, let's be stick to classic. Uh, I think there's a default first name for like American. Yeah, first, where is it? Yeah, so these are, I think, the American kind of typical American first names, but it actually will recognize almost anything because uh, you can use Japanese first names, I think, there as well. So I used like it's no problem. Um, because uh, just because, as you can imagine, we have only one kind of intent right now outside of this default intent. So basically, almost everything we say will be attempted to be mapped to this intent. All right, so I selected Amazon first name here and then just save the model. So after I save the model, I need to build the model, which takes a minute usually. So what build does actually, it trains the you know machine learning basically uh, under uh, underbelly of all this uh, UI that we have here to be able to map whatever users say, you know, from speech, including speech recognition, into like these kind of phrases. So it's training for me now. So build, full build successful. Make any changes, you will need to rebuild the model to take effect. All right, sounds good. So it was a little fast, I guess. Uh, I hope people were able to follow. Maybe slow to some people. If you notice here on the right top, there's a button called evaluate model. So you can play kind of a little bit offline and like you can say like, uh, you know, what if I say like, uh, I don't know, like, uh, like, uh, like, I don't know, Udon, you know, uh -huh. it falls into my name intent and first name is Udon. It's a little strange, but now like you you should realize that we have one intent basically, and this is the one of the our examples is like just a slot without anything, which is a first name slot. So basically, like pretty much almost anything can fall there. The good thing though, like if we say something like my name is uh, Maxime, that is able to recognize that it's my name and ten. And it's actually extracted the slot filler for the name, Maxim. So it works kind of for our purposes. It works as intended. You can use like Japanese names, like, uh, you know, to, uh, you know, I am, let's a little bit different. Let's try a little bit different. I'm known as, uh, I don't know, like uh, Ken, right? See, the, the good thing about the like machine learning part is that even though there was no example like I'm known as, it was able to recognize the intent and extract the 
name from that example to known as can. As you can see here at the bottom, it says like Ali consider it intent. So something that had a little bit lower uh, confidence, but it tried to, it thought for a bit, maybe like I am is, you know, like kind of makes sense, but known as can could be a name. If you say I am like Max could be, I am known as can, but in the end it selected like this one as a top hypothesis. So this is correct. First name Udon, yeah. I mean, usually you try to break the system, right? Uh, because people will, you know, when people can talk to the machine, they say weird things. All right, everybody was able to get to this stage, I hope. So this doesn't even require AWS. So this is pure Alexa side. So don't forget to save the model and build the model. So now when we go to the test panel, and let's just try to say something like, uh, oh, we cannot test it, right? Because our skill quits right away at the moment, right? So let's first, deploy our index two. So we moved index two to index JS and let's deploy it to our backend NPM run deploy. So if you checked our index two you will see that now we have like here we now do read the event that uh your backend receives we parse the event to check the request type. If the request is launch request, which is the first request to your skill, then we reply with, hi, what's your name? And, uh, but if the request is uh, kind of intent, and it's my name intent, and it contains a first name slot, then we extract the first name slot value. And we use it here in response we say something like here we say hello first name nice to meet you so this is also a very simple dialog manager we just recognize two kinds of intent the launch request and the my name intent All right, so it's successfully deployed to the Lambda. Now I can go to the test console and I can invoke the skill. All right, it worked for me. Let me wait for a bit until it works for a few more people. Hey, Sasha. Welcome back. Yeah, we're waiting now for the students to catch up. So just to recap what we did so far is uh, the first version of the skill was just a one shot kind of thing. We started the skill, it said something and it quits right away. The most recent version, it asks you, the user, uh, what's your name? 
then it parses whatever your response, attempts to extract the name from your response if possible. And then in our backend, we store this name in a variable and then use it in our response saying, hello, first name, nice to meet you. And then we end the session. So here, if you examine the code, you will notice that we modified our first response to launch request. We don't end the session anymore. So we used to, it used to be true here to end the session. Now we don't end the session because we ask the question, what's your name? So we expect the user answer. But we end the session as soon as the user provided the name. All right, if somebody got to successfully to the point where Alexa can greet them by name, just let us know in the chat. All right, we have one success, good. All right, excellent. So now you kind of have all the tools necessary to build uh, you know more complex dialogues because uh, you can uh, uh, specify basically what you expect the user to say you can extract that from the user and you can respond using this you know knowledge that you extracted one thing to add is uh, let me examine something so here, the skill exited, right? So let me, great, we have a second success, excellent. So let me examine now the skill, uh, what like the output and the input to the backend in a little more detail. So let me start the skill again, hello test. So you see like, let's, let me, zoom in a bit so here the output to the back end um, has this session thing session uh, kind of object with user id session id and things like that so as an first you know this is a launch request the session object does not contain uh, the uh, attribute called attributes, <laughs> um, but the future requests within the same session will contain a special attribute called attributes, which is something that allows you to store the state of their session to persist the data in the session. So let's see like what what I mean by that. So here like the session basically started from we don't know anything about the user right at the moment right so in our response we responded with this thing called session attributes and we filled it with a username now we didn't have to do it but we we could just send an empty object but notice that we we provided basically this uh, attribute called session attributes 
and we put something inside, right? So this is our part. This is what backend did. So the Alexa kind of part received that information. So now when we have a next interaction, uh, which is like, um, which is something which I respond with my name. So now let's look carefully at this session, what like content, contents of the session object. You'll see that now it has this attributes uh, uh, attribute and it has exactly what we passed it in the beginning. So, which is now, you know, because we didn't know the name at the mo at that time, but now when I responded, this is my response to the name, right? Our backend responded to the name, you'll see that I kind of updated session attributes now with the username Johnny. So now in the next interaction, if I didn't finish my skill, you know, the next uh, response from Alexa would include the username Johnny so that, you know, your Lambda would know it. As you know, Lambda is a stateless um, process, right? So it starts and it ends basically upon every invocation without preserving the states uh, normally. In reality, you know, it's a little more complex, but you know, in general, it does not preserve the state. So that means you have to like keep your, you have to save your state somewhere. And uh, if you remember my initial kind of diagram here, that you could use some sort of persistent storage. You could use like a database. You could use a, like some sort of API, you know, like to store the data that you receive from the user, like username. Um, but the most simple way kind of that Alexa provides to you is like within one session, you can store the data in this object called like attributes, session attributes. The problem with this though, is that it's actually not persistent across the sessions. So in reality, in production, personally, I don't use it at all, for example. So I store everything in a database uh, just because I wanna you know, persist the knowledge across the session. So if I learn the username once, I don't wanna ask the user again uh, in the future. But that could be useful in some cases because it's very low latency kind of storage. All right, so good. So now we have a skill that does something actually interesting, right? So let's spice it up a bit. So we have a little bit of time. So I'll add one more modification here to actually show you the that you can not just play the you know, have Alexa speak to you, but you can play like any kind of audio as well. So if you open index three, you will see that my output here is modified like in the bottom, it says, hello, username, nice to meet you. And then it plays, I included this audio tag with a link to the uh, MP3 file that I uploaded to S3. So, if you want to try it yourself, so what we can do now is you go to your AWS console, which should be opened in your Lambda. Uh, now go to services and open S3. So S3, for those who are not familiar, is just a, basically a file storage service from Amazon. So, let me remove this. Right, so probably you don't have anything there, like if you never use it, so it will look like this. So what you can do is you can, I mean, I'll just show how to use S3, so to put the MP3 file there, but you don't have to use like, again, S3, you can put your MP3 file in any, accessible kind of cloud service, right? So here I'll do the quick kind of example how to use S3. So we put a bucket name, I call it demo sounds. 
the problem is actually that it, this namespace is a uh, universal across like all Amazon. So it's very easy to find and, you know, it's not so easy sometimes to find a name which is not taken. So demo sound surprisingly is not taken in this region, but now that I will take it, you probably will need to name your bucket something else. So we can like skip here and uh, here you have block all public access. I don't, I wanna uncheck it because I want to allow public access to the MP3 file. So I have to acknowledge that it will be public next. And then I create a bucket. The bucket demo sounds created. And then I can just, if you go to your repo, you will notice that I included this MP3 file there called chime M M3, mp3 in assets directory. So you can just drag it there and upload to S3. Once you upload it, don't forget to like click and make it public. And if you click on it, you will see the URL of this file. And I can open it in, the, in my browser. It does play. So now I just get this URL and I can insert it in this index three uh, place where I have the audio tag in my SSML. Which is exactly what I have there already. Or you can just use mine because it's public accessible. So it's that will work as well. So let's now copy this or move this MP3 uh, index three to index and deploy. Let me switch the audio to internal speakers so that you can you can hear what's going on for those who kind of didn't follow. That should be that should work, I think. Okay. Now let's go to the SKU and Hi, what's your name? Can you guys hear? Could you hear Alexa? Uh, yes, yeah. Yeah. Hello, Massimo. Nice to meet you. And there's a little bit MP3 sound there in the end. Cool. So this is basically all that I have for today and we're almost out of time. So I thought like we can open the, the room for questions and let you guys catch up like for those who kind of were following. Um, So if you have any question, don't hesitate to uh, to raise your voice or just maybe write your question on the chat, and we'll uh, and Maxim will answer you. I probably need to turn some lights. Right. Finally, <laughs> finally I know, right? turning the light. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't help, right? It's like behind me. <laughs> Maxime, while people are thinking about the oh, okay, the question mm -hmm. you have.
So we get a question from Maxim. What does it take to make it work for a language different from English? Uh, not much, actually. It's surprisingly easy. I mean, for the languages that, where the Alexa is available, basically, you just need to be able to, you know, understand that language yourself as a developer, I guess, since you will be using these resources. But otherwise, for example, for Japanese, like I, I use it uh, a lot for Japanese skills. So let me share and show you how to, how to select a Japanese language here. So when you are in your skill console, right? So, so language, Cecilia is a language English US, right? So here you have a language settings, right? In a build. So you could uh, to select one of those languages where Alex is available. That's quite a few, right? Including Japanese. So in Japan, it's a, Alexa was released a little later like than in the US, so not as many users yet, but uh, it's quickly growing actually, as well as uh, Google Home. And I think the third one is uh, Line Clova. There's a Line Smart Speaker as well. But Alexa probably still number one in Japan, I think, yeah. And it's pretty popular in Europe too, and the uh, huge in India. Um, the thing is that you can interact with Alexa skills without having an Alexa device because you can get like a Alexa app on your phone, iPhone or Android, and uh, you can run the skills pretty much as if you were running it on a device. These are for those who are like not familiar with their with their skills that much. Uh, there's also monetization kind of options for the skills. So there are like successful businesses that kind of build skills and they monetize the skills as well. Oh, we have another question. Let me read it for you. Yeah, I'm reading it. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. All right, so I have a, a question regarding sound file. In the beginning, I saw you, ha uh, you had a, a sound after the welcome prompt. Is there any way that I can insert my own audio file without having AWS account? Is your sound file free on or provided by it's By Amazon. So I don't know about welcome prompt sound like uh the one i i played in the very end is my my mp3 right so the welcome prompt sound I, i'm not sure if there was a welcome prompt sound like um, but if there was then it's probably amazon kind of alexa uh, default sound that they don't allow you to have access to um what else like is there any way that i can insert my audio file without having a aws account uh as long as you can uh well i mean to put your skill somewhere you need to you don't need a aws account right because like to 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 have a backend you can have a backend on google cloud or any other cloud or on your home server for example if it can handle like the traffic uh so as you saw, there is just HTTPS kind of endpoint that you have to enable. And then your Alexa can address it. So you will need Alexa account to access the skill console, but you don't need a AWS account. So your audio file can be anywhere accessible on the internet. I just demoed like S3 just for, you know, to kind of, I mean, if Amazon paid me, that would make sense, but I just, I just, I demoed <laughs> that, you know, you can do it via AWS as well, you know. <laughs> uh, 
and the good thing again, like uh, with, uh, you know, I don't know, like other services like cloud that you would use, but you know, both Google cloud and Amazon cloud, they have a huge like free tier kind of services. So, and uh, in case of Amazon, you know, like when you do Alexa development, just to reiterate, you don't have to pay for speech recognition or NLU or a natural language generation, uh, rather text to speech, you don't have to pay because it's kind of part of your Alexa ecosystem and provided for free. So, which is pretty convenient. But yes, sometimes it makes sense to host the skill outside of uh, AWS for, you know, cost kind of efficiency. Or if you get a lot of, like a lot of startups and individual developers can get credits from, uh, you know, Google Cloud or AWS Cloud. If you get some credits from them, then it makes sense to use them rather than like default, which is also possible. Yeah. Cool. Any other questions? So for the SSML, like, I, I mean, it's kind of fun to play with SSML like capabilities. So there's a link uh, I have somewhere. Maybe I just look it up again. Oh, Alexa. Yeah. So if you Google like Alexa SML, oops. I'll paste the link. So you will find like a lot of kind of nice commands that you can insert in your, uh, in here, in your output. So for example, you could, you could use prosody, you could use like emotion and different voices as well. So there's a bunch of voices. Like for American English, there's a bunch of voices, but there's also for other, and you can use like British voices, Indian voices, you know, like Japanese, of course. Not so many, but you know, there's a couple of voices, like Japanese voices as well. Yeah. So that's kind of a nice playground for those who like to talk to their device. Cool. Okay, if we have no other questions, probably we're gonna wrap up the session soon. Um, Maxime, if you think that mm -hmm. If you want people to stay in touch with you, um, mm -hmm. maybe you can share some resources, some contacts that people might find you. And for yeah, those, I'm gonna share the email. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for those actually who doesn't know, um, Maxime is a second um, a foreign resident in Osaka who got a startup visa to launch his startup in Japan in Osaka, and I hope he is proceeding with that. Yeah, so far. Thank you. Yeah. I just okay. had an interview two days ago to, for extension. Uh, it's like two times half a year in Osaka. So my first half a year is almost done. Are you already on the way of uh, uh, creating your company, incorporating it in Japan? Yeah, I think I, I'll, I'll, I'll should do it in a few months yeah, before second half a year ends. Yeah, good <laughs> luck. Keep us in, in touch about Thank this. You. Thank you, yeah. Okay, so we have no other questions. Probably people are just either amazed or they are just digesting <laughs> what they've seen today. Thank you so much everyone for joining. And uh, yeah, so thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for being with us until the end. And of course, great thanks to Maxime. Without you, Maxime, and without your knowledge, we wouldn't have such an amazing workshop. We are very, very, happy to have you with us today yeah, thank you so and, much and thank you for supporting Jan and Sasha um, and yeah, both yeah. Jan thank you so much for supporting as well um, mm -hmm. and uh, Maxime right now is in Osaka right so if yes, yeah. if you ever come to Tokyo we'll be very happy to see you in Impact Hub feel free to drop by for a coffee or something else the Levagon team will be yeah. very happy to meet you sounds again good. sounds good yeah Okay, everyone, thank you so much. We are wrapping up uh, the meeting. If you still have your last questions, you can quickly 
shoot them into the chat. If no, see you next time for the next uh, workshop. Or for some of you, maybe we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Right, bye. Thank you. Bye bye.